Hi there, folk. Just before the break, we looked at bar graphs. In this short session that we have together, we're going to look at histograms. Now, what is a histogram? Let's read about it. Histograms are different from bar graphs in that they represent continuous data. Data that is displayed on a histogram is a group data. There are no spaces between the bars. Remember, folk, when we looked at bar graphs, it was based on discrete data, whereas uh, histograms is data that's continuous. It's running on. So we could be looking at heights, and you know height starts from zero all the way through to whatever height we want to do. If we're looking at a kid, obviously we're not going to start at zero. We're probably going to start at a height this much. I don't know. Do you get babies shorter than that? I don't think so. Okay, but babies round about that height, what's that? About 30 centimeters high, going all the way through to round about 2.5 meters. Imagine meeting a man who's 2.5 meters tall. That's like really tall. But all that Data is continuous and we can say well how many people are shorter than 50 centimeters how many people are between 50 and 1 meter so we can plot that but because we're dealing in height and it's a continuous height ranging from zero all the way through to whatever it's going to be data that is continuous and so when I draw a bar graph on continuous data it's going to be a histogram and histogram is basically like bars but those bars are touching each other so let's have a look at an example here Lewanda measures the length of his school books in centimeters and draws up the frequency table below okay so same poor Lewanda does not have much of a life he gets home, he's totally bored with life, and he measures all his books, all his workbooks, his textbooks, and measures how long they all are. Why he would want to do that, I have no idea, but for some reason he does. Okay, now, draw a histogram to represent this data. So here I have a set of axes, and I'm going to represent the data that I see up here, I'm going to put it in here. Okay, so first thing is this, what is this actually showing me? It's showing me the length of all my textbooks, okay, of textbooks. What do I have on my vertical axis? I have my frequency or the number of textbooks. And on the bottom here, I've got my uh, length in centimeters okay so looking at that we can see our centimeters have been broken into different category so uh, categories rather so i have my first category 20 to 23,9 centimeters so i've got 20 to 23,9 my next category is from 24 to what to 26 comma 9 Okay, so let's write that to 26,9. My next category is 27 to 29,9. 27 to 29,9. And finally, longer than 30 centimeters. Okay, now let's represent this. First of all, uh, we want to know what sort of axis are we going to have here? I've got one, two, three, four lines, and the most amount I've got is seven. When I say seven divided by four, I'm going to get one comma something. So let's make each uh, line represent two books. So two, four, six, eight. Remember, we said we could have frequency or the number of books. Okay, so how many books are between 20 and 23? I've got four books. So I'm going to draw a nice little straight line here. Let's do that. Got four books all the way here. And we're going to do it again. Okay. Four books. And again, four books. Cool. Then between 24 uh, and 26, I've got seven books. So now what's going to happen is I'm now going to extend this to 7. Oopsie. Let's just get another line here. 
Okay, to seven. So all the way from here, we're going up to seven. And then we're going to draw a line across. Okay, we'll draw a line across. And finally, draw a line down. Can you see how the graphs are touching? Why are they touching? Because I have continuous data. Can you see my data is running on? 20 to 23.9, 24 to 20. It's just continuous. It's not like saying hamburgers, hot dogs. No, it's length, 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 length. And the length is flowing, okay? Uh, 20 to 23, then to 24 to 26,9, 27 to 29,9, and then more than uh, 30. The next one, I've got 5. So let's draw up to 5. Here's 5. Let's just get it quickly again. Uh, 5. So we're going 5 here. And then we're going to draw a line down. 5 is about over there and then a line down. And finally, more than 30, we told is three. So I'm gonna go across three, and then down. Do you see the difference between a bar graph and a histogram? Okay, bar graphs, bar, 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 histogram, bars, but they're touching each other because it's showing that it's a flow. There's a movement. There's a movement of the length in centimeters. Okay, straightforward, easy, nothing too difficult. Now, let's have a look here. The table below shows a number of runners who completed a marathon within specific times. So here, less than three hours, we've got 541. More than three hours, we've got 582. And we go all the way up to 4,265. Now, we're going to plot that on this graph. Now, folks, because of time, I'm going to draw this relatively freehand. So it's not what you're going to do in an exam. In an exam, you are going to use a ruler, okay? But I'm just trying to speed up time here, and I'm going to do this. So what are we doing? We're saying uh, the number of runners. Okay, so number of runners in a marathon. In a marathon obviously you'll write a lot neater because quite hard writing on this board and then um, what do i have i've got my time okay and it's time in what it's time in hours cool then over here i've got the number of runners now we're going up to a height of, or, or sorry, a number of runners to maximum of 4,265. 4,265. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, right, I have 4,265. Uh, I'm going to divide it by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 lines. And I get an answer of around about 473, so I'm going to make it 500. So I'm going to say here I've got 500, then I've got 1,000, I've got 2,000 up here, I've got 3,000 runners here, I've got 4,000 runners here, and obviously the very top line, 4,500 runners. Now, when I look at my time, I know that I've got times of less than three hours, so let's do that less than three hours okay so here it's going to be less than three i'm going to do it like this right then i've got uh just more than three up to four okay um so it's going to be there and then i've got from four to five i've got from five to six 
I've got from 6 to 7, and I got from 7 to 8. Guys, obviously you're going to do this a lot neater than I am. Your heading here, time and hours will be down here so it doesn't interfere. In fact, you know what? Let's do the right thing here. I always say to my students, never write over yourself. And then that's exactly what I'm doing. So remember, I said here, this is my time in hours. And I had 4 to 5, 5 to 6, 6 to 7, and 7 to 8 hours. Now, we got to put in the numbers. Lesson 3 was 541. Now, folk, I want to show you something. Here's 500. Halfway is 750. So 541 is just a bit lower than that mark. Okay. But remember, you using a ruler. I'm just doing free end because I want to show you how it should look kind of. Okay. But remember got to use a ruler. The next one, 852, did it between three and four hours. So it's still just over halfway here, and that's between three and four hours. Between four and five hours, I have 1,523. So it's 1,500, just over that 500 mark there. Okay. Between five and six hours, I've now got 2,300. 2,500, so 2,300 will be round about over there. Between six and seven hours, we've got 3,264. 3,264, just over halfway there, great. Between seven and eight hours, 4,200. So I've got 4,265, round about that area. And remember, your examiner will allow you a little bit of leeway, okay? So you can see I'm not exactly, but I, my examiner will look and say, you know what, this guy knows what he's doing. He's as close as anything. I'm going to give him the marks. Okay, so now I've drawn this graph, and you can actually see this graph and see as time goes on, more and more runners finish towards the end. That bit of data is a lot easier to read than that. This, you can kind of get an idea of what's going on, but here, voila, you see straight away, look what's happening. Notice the graphs are touching. Why? It's continuous data. Why is it continuous? We're dealing with time. So it's flowing from three hours into the fourth hour, into the fifth hour, into the sixth hour. Let's see the type of questions which we could be asked here. How many runners completed the race? Okay, so when we look at this, we can actually tell how many runners completed the race. Why? Because it says the following are the ones who completed the marathon. So what are we going to do? We're just going to add those up. So let's do that. Out comes my calculator and I'm going to say, right, Mr. Calculator, I've got 541, then I've got another 852 runners, then another 1,523 runners, another 2,356 runners, and then 3,264 runners, and finally 4,265 runners. So there were actually 12,800 and one runners who finished this marathon. Okay, my next question goes on and asks me this. Do we have any idea how many runners started the race? Well, actually we don't. Eh? We only got a table saying how many completed the race. And remember, the number that start isn't necessarily the number that finish. There are always people who pull out of a marathon because of injury or because they're tired or because they don't reach the halfway mark in a specific time. Okay, my next question. When did the bulk of the runners complete the race? Now, we can see that from our graph straight away. Most of the runners finished after six hours, between six and eight hours. Or if you want to be more specific, between seven and eight runners. But the bulk of the runners, this is the bulk over here. Okay, most of the runners finished within that period or seven to eight. We'd accept that as well. Okay, my next question goes on and asks me this. 
What is the average speed in kilometers per hour of a runner who completes the 42,2 kilometer marathon in 7 hours and 15 minutes? Now notice we're taking something from a bar graph and suddenly we're asking a question on speed. We can do that, especially in paper two. In fact, in paper two, that's what they do. They'll take a different scenario and they'll bring in a different way of asking those questions. So here we're dealing with statistics, we're dealing with graphs, and suddenly, voila, we throw a, a question in dealing with measurement when we've got speed. Okay, so what is the average speed? We know speed is distance over time and normally your examiner will tell you that anyway so what is my distance my distance is 42 comma 2 kilometers and my time is 7 hours and 15 minutes now 15 minutes we can write as 15 over 60 so we can change all that to 7 and 15 over 60 hours because 15 minutes remember there are 60 minutes in an hour so we've got to um, make that a lot simpler okay so 15 over 60 is what it is and we're gonna say right mr. calculator I got 42.2 I'm gonna divide that by seven hours and I can even use my time button if I want to and 15 minutes and no seconds equals and I get an answer of 5.82 so he's running at an average distance of 5,82 kilometers per hour. Okay, folk, there is so much things we can do. Let's have a look at here. Here's another one showing continuous data. Here we're looking at the salaries that people are getting. And we can see the number of employees over the salary in thousands. And it's all in money. It's continuous. It's flowing from 0 to 120 to 150 to 180. And hence we've got our histogram. Okay, and then they can ask us a whole lot of questions on that. Right, in the segment then, we've covered the following. We've explained the difference between discrete and continuous data, and we've completed examples, drawing and using histograms. Folk, we're going to see each other on the screen again soon. Until then, stay well.